Today, I'd like to share one more idea. I keep mastering Burkina Faso styled weaving. I've learned a lot, but I'm still enthusiastic about it. So today I'm going to present a cloth woven in this weaving technique. So, a cloth. I've seen a picture of a cloth woven of some threads or yarn or maybe fabric. I've noticed the familiar technique and decided to try and apply it to a niche I was going to cover. I wanted to make it more practical and at the same time nice looking. So I woven this cloth to hang it into the niche. I've also seen this kind of a cloth used as a curtain. As an option it can be a base for some panel picture or wall mount composition. I've got some further ideas, but uh, let's leave them till the next master classes. So far we are considering such a cloth. This one has been woven of such coated thin newspaper tubes. Now I'm going to view with tubes of a bigger diameter. These tubes have been rolled on a knitted needle sized one. The paper strips are ten and a half centimeters, which is about four inches wide. An A4 paper sheet divided into halves. As for coating, I'll describe it. I'll describe it in the post on our website. I've moisturized the tubes before starting to work and left them pack overnight. So the tubes have been prepared. Let's start working. I take two tubes and start weaving in a traditional Burkina Faso style. The only difference is the weaving goes downward, so I leave top tails very short. They'll get cut later. Most of the tube length goes down. Adjoin a tube. Bend. The tubes are rather dense, which makes the weaving volumetric and interesting looking. The tube thickness does matter here. Recently I felt like experimenting and decided to make use of some very old tubes. However, the experiment has failed. The work is not relief enough and looks much worse than I hoped it would be. Continue weaving this way until the required cloth weeds. I woven the previous cloth to fit the niche size. Now as a pattern for our master class I'm going to weave a cloth size like this. I mean you make a pattern of the size corresponding to your cloth dimensions. And weave the first row, not reaching the edge a bit, leaving some space for a curve. So keep weaving the cloth until the required weeds. It is more convenient to work further on surface. Let's try the workpiece for size. I join one more tube. Well, let's add another one. One, two, now the turn. I 
I've tried a few options, this one seems optimal to me. Take a look once again, please. I've adjoined the last tube, then the previous tube, let down. I mean, you've made uh, uh, the required step in your weaving. Now take the last three tubes and braid them. The tubes are wet and easy to braid with no breaks. Make as many braid stitches as you need for a sufficient row height. I'd like my rows to be this high, so let's count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so I need 6 stitches. Now, I'm going to repeat all the same actions, but in the reversed direction. In what way? Here is the left tube directed downward. I put a pole onto it and make a turn with the right tube and perform all the same steps on the backward. Turn the upper tube directed to the left. This way I've got the first stitch in the weaving. Lay the second tube of the base on top. Take the previous tube of the base and turn it to the left. Then lead the upper tube down. Make sure the rows are getting smooth. If you find it difficult at the beginning, you can line the pattern. Pull the tubes of the bees tighter to align the rows. Try your best to keep the rows parallel. Note that you have to follow the row smoothness from the very beginning, as you involve these vertical tubes into weaving, and it would be impossible to tighten them later. This one can be pulled for the last time, but now I'm turning it, after which I won't be able to adjust the row height. Here I can pull the tube a bit, continue the next one. Do you hear the quarter tubes creak? Continue weaving in the backward direction until the row end, keeping the first and the second rows parallel to each other. Tighten the tubes. So, reach the row end. Make the last stitch. And braid the three outermost tubes. It's time to lengthen the tubes. When braiding, I lengthen the tubes in the same way as during the weaving itself, by mere adjoining. All the excessive tails will be cut off later. Just adjoin new long tubes. Make sure the number of stitches is identical from both sides. Let's recount. 6 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 
So, the seventh stitch will start the turn. Repeat all the same steps. Take a look, please. When braiding, I have let the right hoop down. Lay the pole from the upper row on top. Turn the left tube to the right. Lay the tube on top and lead it down. Continue the same actions in the reverse direction to the right. Let me say a few words on lengthening. Lengthen both working tubes and poles, or tubes of the base as I call them. When needed. The main thing is not to get confused. Lay the pole on top. Here is the working tube. In this row the tubes of the base, which are turning into working tubes, are getting too short. So be very careful not to be entangled. So here is the working tube. Lay a tube of the base onto it. Bend and lengthen. Get a working tube again. Turn it. It's time to lengthen. Press thoroughly and lay a new tube, a new tube on top. And continue making sure you don't confuse the tubes. They are especially easy to confuse when you lengthen many tubes simultaneously. Take a note that I don't use any glue here. Don't forget to tighten the tubes. It is going to be much easier in the next row, because the tubes will already be long. And continue. All these protruding tails will get cut off later and you'll get a smooth airy cloth. So I've got such a cloth. As you can see the tubes are rather thick for such a small size. However it was meant to be to show you the work principle. After all the tails have been cut off, I will varnish the clothes. The tubes have already been coated, so varnishing will be quite enough. Get rid of all the tails, both intermediate and the ones protruding from the, bead, from the braid. The same goes for the outermost rows. Cut all the tails off this way. And you'll get a smooth and even cloth. Let me show it to you once again. Here I've got thin tubes, which makes the item area. Well, that'll do for today. However, I haven't stopped here. I felt like trying some other types of curves, but let's leave it for the next masterclass. Well, a little announcement. I've tried creating such a small flower based on the same principle. More on this next time.